Well, Taylor, I hope they weren't curled up. They literally have not moved a meter. Oh, there we go. That's what we were hoping for. Let's stand up. Let's stretch. Let's go try catch something. No, no, let's sleep. <laughs> now, they literally have not moved a meter and a half from where they were left last night by Tristan. So, still lying up in the exact same position. And looking a little bit more relaxed this morning. Good news, I thought they would be long gone. Obviously, I think they're quite safe down here. Tired kitties. Now, it is unusual that they haven't moved overnight and that they are still in the exact same position. I mean, they did eat reasonably well the night before last, but quite strange. Hi, uh, Roger. Uh, Roger would like to know, does anyone know the coalition the Nkuma Pride descended from? Uh, as far as I know, no. The Nkuma Pride were found first in Buffalo's Hook and a place called Brian brown ivory clearing under an Inkahuma tree, which is a brown ivory tree. So I think I'm not sure, and that was many, many moons ago, probably well over 10 years ago. So not sure where the Inkahuma pride comes from. And one must remember that lion prides are never from one coalition. They are from multiple coalitions. So I'm pretty sure in Kahumas would have been at some point under the Mapojo, the Matimbas, and those are the only two I know about. There's probably been far longer, far more coalitions over the years. Now remember, hashtag Safari Live or questions at wildearth.tv if you'd like to ask a question just like Roger just did. muddy little cubs now of course you can see still a bit of remnants of the mange uh, but I think they're getting big enough now that the mange they should be able to see off the mange and with all this wet weather it should make a massive difference as well now, as I said it's quite strange that they're still in the exact same spot it could be the fact that they're sort of listening to where, the li uh, to where the other male lions are, deciding which direction to move in case those males come further to the east. So, well, I th as far as I know, I think it's the Matimbas, but it, but never 100% sure till we see them. I'm waiting for confirmation, but they are at s near Sydney's waterhole. Um, so probably as the crow flies, three and a half kilometers, four kilometers from here, Morning, Cheryl, in Oregon. Now, Cheryl's wondering, can lionesses tell the difference between male lion calls? Most certainly they can. Uh, they are, are very able to tell the difference between male, different males and different individual females as well. So at the moment, the roars they want to hear are Birmingham's. The roars they don't want to hear armor timbers or any other lion coalition that are not the Birmingham's. Now interestingly enough in quite a lot of lion prides and not much genetic research has been done on these lions in the last while but in other parts of Africa it turns out that sometimes up to 50% of the cubs are not born to the coalition males. So there is a possibility that if Amber Eyes and the youngest in Kahuma are in Estrus, they could be sneaking around with a, an unknown consort on the 
fringes of the territory. Now, certain male lions that are unable to join big coalitions, this is their strategy for passing on their genetic lineage. So they will be complete no completely nomadic throughout their life, but they will still mate with females from different prides, spending their genetics. So there is always a possibility that that could be going on. So the, the most recent study on that was done in Namibia in Atosha, where it turned out that 49% of the cubs to the larger prides in that area were born to nomadic males uh, who were sneaking around the peripheries.